patience of God is all what we need as patience. 26 week in ordinary time, 28th of September, Tuesday reflection. The God, a God who waits upon us, what a patience he has on us who are patients. Because patients need the doctor, isn't it? So doctor should have the patience to bear the nature of the patient. We find in the first reading, thus says the Lord of hosts, people shall yet come, even the inhabitants of many cities. The inhabitants of one city shall go to another saying, let us go at once to entreat the favor of the Lord and to seek the Lord of hosts. Now, Israelites are chosen people and God is calling this prophet Prophet Zechariah is calling everyone, all the nations together as one nation under the wing of God, under the love of God to experience his love and protection. Let us, let us go at once to enter the favor of the Lord and to seek the, seek the Lord of hosts. I myself am going. Many people and strong nations shall come to seek the Lord of hosts in Jerusalem and to entreat the favor of the Lord. So it's the mind of God is so broad. You cannot narrow down his mind to a petty, petty desire. No. His mind is broad. His vision is broad, my dear friends. So what, what, he, what he dreams about us, the dream that he has about you is a thing that you can even understand and fathom. No way. That's how he works things out. And the Lord says, thus says the Lord of hosts, in those days, 10 men from the nations of every tongue shall take hold of the robe of a Jew and sing, saying, let us go with you, for we have heard that God is with you. So that's, that's the whole idea. He will touch you so that you, by you, many will be touched. Evangelization, taking Jesus' love to the world is our prime calling, isn't it? Is our sole desire, that should be our sole desire. So in this, in this being a vessel of taking the love of God to the world, you have to remember one thing. It's not your mission. It's Jesus' mission. What all what you have to do is to get connected to the, to the Lord. It's beautiful when he says, when the days drew near for Jesus to be taken up, he set his face to go to Jerusalem. Now it's a clear journey uh, in gospel, in synoptics, my dear friends. Luke, Mark and Matthew. It's a clear journey from Nazareth to Jerusalem. Jerusalem is the place he was crucified. Moment of glorification. So it was a clear journey, clear journey. So he went to Jerusalem through Samaria. But then in this journey, what he is doing? And he sent messengers ahead of him who went and entered a village of Samaritans to make preparations for him. So this is exactly when it comes to evangelization. It's not you giving Christ. No. It's, it's his mission. You cannot turn a person, convert a person. He has to convert him. Only you, are be, you become an instrument. You will prepare the way for that. So we are messengers. As two messengers went to Samaritans to prepare the way, do the preparations for him. So in every work, you have to remember that you are not Christ. No. As parents, you are not Christ. In children, your, in your, in your children's life, you prepare the way so that Jesus can be active in them. 
It's not you impose them, you force them, you bulldoze your ideas in their lives. No. Most of the thing we, it becomes our mission. So one, once it becomes our mission, we jump the gun. And we, we miss the point. No, it's not the way. It's always he. He sent messengers to the places here where he wanted to go. That's exactly our, our, our mission, my dear friends. So preparation is preparation. That is not culmination. In preparation, Jesus has to come and complete the culmination. He should be, he should be the complete culmination. And he says, when and when his disciples James and John saw it, they said, Lord, do you want us to tell fire to come down from heaven and consume them? See the, see the idea. I mean, they, they are not patient. The patience of God is different, my dear friends. If you want to heal the patient, you have to be patient. You are patient, you have to be patient in healing the patient. That patience is a gift that you have to, you have to cultivate in you. You cannot make decisions in haste. More speed, less, more haste, less speed, isn't it? And that's exactly why you cannot work, you cannot act with anger. When you are provoked, you have to calm down yourself. Always remember it's his mission, not yours. Jesus, Lord, do you want us to consume them? But he turned and rebuked them. And they went on to another village. Rebuke, not the Samaritans, but James and John. Because they, their pride, their, their haste, their speedy decisions won't build the kingdom. The first reading beautifully says, there will be many nations holding the robes of Israelites. And those days, 10 men from nations of every tongue shall take hold of the robe of Jew, saying, let us go with you, for we have heard that God is with you. So if the Samar if Samaritans were killed, massacred with fire, what would happen to one of the, one of the nations who are to follow the Lord? Patience of God is an amazing gift that we have. Even in your life, God is so patient. When you make a mistake, don't judge yourself rudely. No. God will look at you patiently, patiently, lovingly. He's never in a hurry. He gives you time to change. And that's how the Lord deals with you. And He expects you to deal in the same way the same way where you when you deal with people your own Samaritans they they can be weak they are not ready to prepare they are not open for correction it can be but then don't rebuke them have patience and that patience will heal the patient so that's exactly the calling today for you, my dear friends. So, to understand the mind of God, your hasty decisions can kill the plan, destroy the plan completely. But then He has a broader plan. Just wait upon Him, listen to His command, just obey, just literally obey and do what He wants you to do. Not more than that, not less than that. He knows exactly what should be done and stick to that plan without sabotaging that plan of God. Amen. May God bless you.